Hi everybody. Uh, I started this with the grade nines yesterday um, by recording a uh, sort of a voiceover that goes with the presentation, um, and I think I'm going to do this for um, all the classes going forward, so that just just that you have something in voice form that accompanies the PowerPoint themselves. Um, so for today's lesson, we're looking at mechanical digestion. So we've already looked at some of the diseases that are involved in the digestive system, and we've looked at the digestive system itself itself in terms of structure. Um, the next, so uh, today's and this week's work was on mechanical digestion, the actual, um, the, the act of chewing and the mechanical function of how we break things down. And then for next week, we're going to focus on chemical digestion, which is the actual breakdown of food that happens in our stomach and in our intestines. So very simply, I don't think this is going to be a very long uh, video, uh, but very simply, mechanical digestion is just is the breakdown of food into smaller pieces, um, but there's no chemical change happening, right? So as we break down the food in our mouth, we chew um, in our mouth, uh, we're just breaking the food down into smaller and smaller and smaller bits, and usually it's to do... Uh, the small to, to break down the food into smaller bits is to make sure that uh, any enzymes enzymes can will act on all food in uh, chemical digestion. Chemical digestion. You can see that. Um, so it's just to it's to help. To aid with chemical digestion, and that's the first thing that we have to do in uh, um, in our mouth itself with the teeth. So, what you need to know, what you need to know here. Now, I don't expect you to know the exact names of each of these teeth. Um, what you need to know, though, is we have, and as you probably know, we have 32 teeth in our mouth, or as you uh, in an adult mouth. Um, the four main classes of teeth are the incisors that are found, uh, that are the front two teeth. You have the canines, you have the premolars, and you have the molars. And this is, as you go, so this is, if I do it in a different color, this is the front, and this is the back. So if you're able to if you're able to keep that in mind and know where um, the teeth are found, yeah, that will help you orient yourself um, to to understand um, how these teeth are involved in the different acts of uh, or in the in the different breakdowns of the different types of food. Um, Often what happens, and this is the case for me, I don't have, uh, my wisdom teeth have been taken out, so I technically, um, I don't have number 16, number 1, number 32, and number 17. So I only have 28 teeth, and for a lot of people, the wisdom teeth are way back in the, in the very back region of the mouth, and what happens often with the wisdom teeth is that um, they, when they erupt, they're the latest to erupt, and they, when they come out, they often come out crooked, or they're, they're, hit, they're going into your second molars, which is not good um, and if that happens there's very few cases where uh, your third molar your wisdom teeth actually come out properly um, so in that case what the dentist will do is take them out and you have a space at the back of your mouth um, that is uh, that is or that is free of any teeth um, it's a very it's a it's quite a painful procedure but once they're out and you've recovered, um, it's it's pretty good. There's no actual, it doesn't affect you in any way. So the four layers um, of an individual tooth, and you don't need to know too much in detail about this, but it's just to know what you're able to actually uh, determine. So the white bit of the tooth that you see when you open your mouth is called the enamel. Uh, the enamel is a very strong. It's a very uh, it's, it's it's a very strong substance in terms of strength. Um, and it, it's meant to be uh, it's it's meant to be unbreakable to a degree, um, which is why we're able to um, eat um, or if we're, we're able to crack open some nuts. Um, it, it's it actually shows the strength of your enamel um, 
uh, that we find in your mouth itself. Right underneath that layer is the dentine. The dentine is sort of an inner covering for the pulp that's found inside. Now inside the pulp you'll find the nerves. Right? So inside this you'll have nerves, but you'll also have your capillaries. Right? So the blood supply that comes to the teeth themselves is all found inside the pulp. And then all of this is protected by two layers, the dentine and the enamel. So the dentine and the enamel uh, protect the pulp. The different types of teeth, we've looked at them already, the four different types that you need to know and, and their function specifically. Um, the incisors are your front two teeth, uh, the front four teeth, so the top two that are found here. Um, and also the bottom two here. And they are the teeth that are involved in the initial biting process and the cutting process. So these are the teeth that you're going to take your initial bite with, or if you need to, um, you know, if something's really tough, those are the teeth that they're sort of the sharper teeth and they're gonna help you break things down. Canines, um, if something is really, really uh, tense and flexible and very stringy, um, canines are usually there for tearing things apart and ripping things apart. Your premolars and molars, which are found at the back, um, are specifically for chewing and grinding. Right? So it's to make sure that they that keep grinding the food as much as possible um, so that it becomes this pulpy, uh, a, a pulpy bolus, as we call it, uh, which can then be uh, swallowed um, a lot easier. Now, in terms of the two types of uh, two classes of animals that we have, we have carnivores and herbivores. I think it's pretty obvious uh, what is what is the what types of teeth are are found in each. So, with carnivores who are strictly meat eating, they'll have uh, they'll have more incisors and canines. Whereas the herbivores will have more. Because if you if you think about it, something like a horse, a horse isn't going to eat um, meat or a cow. A cow is a better example. They're not going to eat meat. They munch on grass all day, but they need to break down that grass with and with the help of the saliva in their mouth, they're going to break down that grass into really um, into a like a baby food mush. Um, and it's the molars that are going to do that. If you've ever tried to chew food with your front teeth, your your incisors and your canines, it's it's quite hard to do actually and you actually will not get the same amount of uh, breakdown that you would get with your molars and in terms of that that's all you need to know here um, this is uh, more to do with um, uh, today's work. So for today, you're looking at creating some sort of a power a presentation uh, that is looking at different aspects of tooth. One of those is looking at tooth uh, disease. So if you ever go to the dentist, you'll, you may have heard a lot of these um, terms. Um, tooth decay, um, more, more commonly, um, we know them as cavities. And these are, uh, it's just a destruction of the tooth enamel, the strong tooth enamel. And if you think about it, if you have a sort of cavity in your enamel, that means that that part is leading straight down into your, uh, into your dentine. And if that is happening, then it can have an, yeah, then it can have an impact on the nerves and the blood vessels that are found in the pulp itself. So this is why you need to get these filled and this is where the fillings come in because they fill in these black spots right here to ensure that there is no way that more bacteria can go down and break into the nerves and the, uh, in, and the uh, blood vessels. So what happens usually um, if you're eating too much sugar or acidic materials, that acid, um, the bacteria that are found uh, that start to grow inside. So if you have sugar left over and you haven't washed your, uh, wash your mouth or brush your teeth, um, there will be bacteria that's left over. That bacteria is using that sugar to feed um, and, and reproduce. And what that bacteria is going to do is then produce an acid 
as a byproduct. So if it's taking in sugar, it's going to produce a byproduct that's going to, as a waste, and that waste is an acid, and that acid is going to start breaking down the two phenomena. And and what what you really need to do if you it's not this is not to say that you should avoid drinking coke and eating candies but make sure at the, at the very least after you've eaten it you do it you gargle your mouth you uh, swish some water into your mouth and, and really get and try and get as much sugar and food source out of your mouth so that uh, the bacteria doesn't have a food source to release this acid burn. and if you have cavities that form cavities will not be fixed on their own that's where the dentist has to come in and they have to fill it in uh, because your tooth will not if it produces it produces very little but it's not going to produce enough enamel and pulp uh, uh, enamel and, uh, and dentine to uh, cover um, any of the material that has gone essentially black that has been disrupted um, uh, by the uh, by the decay so in terms of oral hygiene, you want to make sure that you are regularly brushing at least twice a day. You're flossing your teeth, making sure the floss goes in between because you're trying to get rid of any food particles that might be stuck in between the teeth. Um, and and, you're, and you can use a mouthwash if you want to get rid of any bacteria or kill bacteria that might be in your mouth. It is this bacteria, if the food particles are stuck in your teeth, food is good for you obviously, but it's also a very, very good source for bacteria to grow. And if you have food that's left over in your teeth, it's a very humid, uh, moist environment in your mouth, and it promotes bacterial growth very, very quickly. And if you have a lot of bacteria in your mouth, they're going to produce the byproduct acid, which is not going to be, uh, which is going to then cause cavities, it's going to start breaking down the tooth enamel, and then you would have to make your way to the dentist for at least a filling. And if it gets too far, and if it breaks, if it, uh, if the decay goes deeper into the tooth, you may need to get something called a root canal, um, which uh, in people have. And, uh, and it's something that um, as long as you're maintaining a regular uh, oral hygiene, um, you can prevent um, uh, or you can't prevent getting any extra work done by the dentist. So uh, that is the video. Hope that clears everything up for you. If you have any questions, just send me a message on Google Classroom or email me and I will have your next video. So the next video is going to be on chemical digestion. Um, and they will be posted at some point in the next few days. Bye.